They sank into slumber. Sorely one paid for evening rest, as often had happened when Grendel guarded that gifting hall, wrongs committing till they wrought his end, death for his sinning. It was seen clearly, well known to men many a year, an avenger lived, survived the loathsome one. After that grim strike, Grendel's mother, warrior queen, carried mind woe, fated to well, in dreadful waters. She lived in icy streams ever since Cain took with his blade his brother's life, father's son. Beauty, he departed. Marked by murder, men's joy, he fled. Many fake guests he sired. Grendel among them. Hateful that sore fear. And Heron found a watchful man waiting for <laughs> the beast that pressed gift halls, Gordon. Man remembered his mighty strength, the ample gifts God had bestowed, turned to the ruler, trusting him to his comfort, mercy, and grace. Thus monster he overcame, settled that healthy new slug out, wretched, slinking to his death place, that foe of mankind. His mother remained, grieving and worried wishing to make a sorrowful journey and son death avenge. Heron, she arrived at, the ring date, there, sleeping in the hall. Soon the hall guards had luck turned grim when Grendel's mother took to the inside. The terror was less, only measuring a maiden's strength. War woman's war might weapon man's when hammer forge, hard striker stained by bloodshed and strong edge, breaks the rival's war quest in hell. Then in the hall, that hard edge was drawn. Swords on benches and battle shields hefted by hands. No helm was thought of, nor hard mail coat when horror seized them. She came hurriedly, escaped he wished for, her life to save when she saw the war men. She took a captive, caught up a fame, hero of a, a man of worth that took to the marsh. He was the Hrothgar, hero most beloved among retainers between the seas. A great shield. Glorious man, murdered in his bed. No Beowulf there. Another building after bright gifting had been assigned to the celebrated Yea. Screams came from Heron. Hand of fate she took, all covered in gore. There had returned and was renowned in the hall. Part of the exchange, where both bargainers were bound to pay with lives of friends. Lord of the day. The great fight theater was fierce in mind when he found that his war first warrior, loved among things, no longer lives. With haste, Beowulf, just by glory, was sought for the bed and break the day. The great hero and his gallant man came those white fairs where the king waited, asking himself if ever the Lord, after this latest pain, would improve life for him. Worthy warrior walked, crossing the floor, with hand-pecked men. Paul would echo. He came to address Dane Friend with words, asked if he spent the spear Dane's lords as keeping with his wish. <laughs> a quiet man. Ask not of joy, sorrow has returned to the Danish people. Eshra is dead. Brother of Ermolov. My chief advisor, my ruined counselor. He stood by my shoulder, at shield walls forefront, as armies clashed with shields held high. Boar struck boar. So a man should be killed from the start. And so he was. I do not know where she went with his body. Flesh proud, terrible, infamous in slaughter. <coughs> she avenged that feud 
which last night, which kill. With fierce grips and your violent strength, because for too long he has destroyed my Danish people. In battle he fell. Life forfeit in guilt. And now another has come. Mighty in your evil. It may seem to many of these things who breathe mind deep for their treasure gold. A cruel heart killing. And now the hand has vanished. That serves your glory and all the right good. I have heard countrymen and hall counselors among my re people report this. They have seen two such creatures. Great Mark Stalker holding the moor, alien spirit. The second that they could discern most clearly of the shape of a woman. The other, <coughs> misshapen, walked the exile's path in the form of a man, though larger than any other. In bygone days, he was called Grendel by the local folk. They knew no father whether before him had been begotten any more mysterious spirit. That murky land they hold, wolf-haunted slopes, windy headlands, awful fen paths, where the upland torrents plunge downwards under the crag and then flood underground. It is not far hence from here, measured in miles, that the mare stands. Over it hangs a hoar-frosted grove with firm-rooted wood looming over the water. Every night one can see there an awesome wonder, fire on the water. There is none so wise or so bold as can behold its abyss. Though the heath sepher, beset by hounds, the strong horned hart might seek the forest, pursued from afar, he will sooner lose his life upon the shore than go into the lake. It is no good place. <laughs> the clashing waves climb up from here, dark to the clouds. And when the wind drives the violent storms until the sky itself droops and the heavens groan, now, once again, all help depends on you alone. You do not yet know this fearful place where you might find the sinful creature. Seek it if you dare. I will reward you with ancient riches for this feud, as I did before, with twisted gold, if you return alive. <coughs> Theo who spoke, son of Theo. Breed not, wise man. Greater it is for everyone to offend That every one of us must await the end of our living. Let him work who may glory before death. That is greatest for unliving and divine warriors. My guardian class, let us go and see the going of friends again. I give you my oath, he will not gain safety in the earth only. High wood mountains, the ground of the sea, go where he will. Old elder leapt up, gave thanks to God the mighty Lord that the man spoke so. Then for Rothgar a horse was sat and braided in the The stately prince wisest king rode, the warriors on foot shield bearers cried. The track of the king was widely seen on the woods pathway. The path went forward over the dangerous <laughs> field over her. Son of Norton, crossed over then, steep stone cliffs, broad danger clubs, narrow pathways unknown to men, tight just for 
what can be here. And a wise man went forward to scout ahead, see the country. He found suddenly a friendless wood, great mountain beams over gray horse stones. Water stood beneath, dreary and disturbed. The Danes, one and all, each meeting noble, many a thane, friends of the shielding, sudden soul free, sadness in heart, when they saw Aesir's hair hide on the sea. People watching, water well done, hot with blood gore. Horn sang again. Warrior sat and saw in the water strange sea dragons. Many a wormkin, wild beast, snakes exploring the sea. And on the head, sea hares lying on sail pathway. At dawn morning, they make the most often a sorrowful journey. Sharp and angry, they hastened away. They heard sounding, war horns singing. A shieldman of the Eos sheared one from life. From sea battle with his arrow bow, battle shaft hard stood in its fighters. Slower to swim, he was in the deep when death took him. He was hairy hastily, harshly on the waves. Bob with war books and war lances, the wondrous wake bearer, worried with Sons hauled on to the black, battled them, viewed the veil spirit. Then Beowulf prepared. He called for his armor, careless of his life. Bright warrior mail, bonded by hands, lined armor coat. Against sword swings, <clears throat> he closed his breast cage, concealed his heart, that no field grip might fix upon his life. Grappled to the soul with grim helping. A gleaming mass helmet guarded his head, gilded with boar crests bordering the rim. Old treasure. Ancient wonder smith's shield against steel bites that no sharp edge blade might slice through to him <coughs> as he sought the beer ground. Stroked down to the bottom of that baleful pond, wrapped <coughs> against death in rich armor bonds. Nor was it the worst of weapons that day that went forth loaned to him, or a tour of prop. Praised through the years by proud weapon thanes. A hard cutting sword, grunting by name. <coughs> the bite of its edges had never yet failed a firm handed warrior, anyone who dared death in battle. Its strength was known in stories of war clash, when edges and spear shafts sang through the air. That son of Uga, strong counts of fame, offered no charges, no challenging wine words when he rode the battle blade by that blood red mirror to the better sword check. He did not himself dare risk his life under the flashing waves. Test his courage. He lost fame for that. His name for Valor. It was not so for Beowulf once he was dressed, prepared for battle. Beowulf spoke, son of Echnaeum. Now am I very eager, fate hath no son. Hold in your soul what we spoke earlier, wisdom giver, gold friend of men. If I should perish, Apart from my life, in your great service, you should stand for me, forth departed, in a father's place. Holding protection, my hand companions, my young bond veins, if battle takes me. And 
those great treasures which you gave to me. Send it here, my close by, dear friend. The stormy Aeon's king, son of Rethel, will see in the gold shining jewels that I found a gold giver great in manhood, and I enjoy while I could his kingly virtues. <coughs>
of weapons. Yes. Wood and adorned, but giant, greater in size than any swordsman else might bear easily to battle. Grim and battle fierce, he grasped the lake hilt. The Dane's hero drew the ring sword. Despairing of life, he struck angrily. So the giant sword grasped on her neck, broke her bone ring. The blade severed fated flesh from her. She fell <coughs> on the floor. The blade sweat blood. The swordsman rejoiced. <coughs> the gleam stood within. The sun shone down. The sky's candle shone most clearly. <coughs> Load as from heaven. He gazed at the hall, Hyalaf saying, Grim, grim faced and angry. He turned to the wall, his weapon raised strongly by the hilt. The sword was not useless to the battle warrior. Now he sought to pay back Grendel. Great war rushes which once he made against the West Gale. Not just the one time, but where, more often when he entered Herorot and slew, sleeping, devoured, Hrothgar the king's heart companion, <coughs> while a bed. Full fifteen men of the folk of the Danes and other such work he performed on the boat. Hateful wars were Soon, fierce hero paid back in full what Brendan had done when he found him lying in bed, battle weary, wanting his life, since war and Hayerot had caused him injury. The corpse burst open when after death day, it endured a mighty blow, a <coughs> cruel battle stroke, and he cut off its head. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, the earth, broad, wonderfully, wasted and quivered 
Son of Ejthil, now, son of Hafdan, lord of the Shildings, see what we've brought, a gift from the mare, a token of glory to gaze upon. I do not walk readily underwater, battle calmly in monster's cave, keep my life easily in that lake lair. I'd have perished if not for the power of God, that great sword grunting, gift of unfirth, was not much good, though famous enough. <laughs> but the ruler of men, who often guides a warrior alone, gave me eyes to see an heirloom on the wall. A, an old sword of giants. So I found a better weapon to wield. When the time was right, I slew those demons. Monstrous housemates. Then, that battle blade, the serpentine sword, melted down to the hilt as the blood spewed out hottest of battle sweats. I brought back from the, the hilt from the cave ward, paid the monsters in kind for the killing, the slaughter of shieldings, the death of danger. It was only right. I promise you this. Tonight, you can rest without fear and error. Things all together, both young and old. Prince of shieldings, lord of your Death will not haunt you as it did of old. Then the golden hilt, the old work of giants, was given to the hand of the grizzled king. It passed that day to the prince of the Danes, from the horde of demons after their fall, created by craftsmen, shaped by smiths. When that grim-hearted foe of God and his monstrous mother, guilty of murder, left this world, the beautiful hilt came to the best of earthly kings. Between the seas. Hrothgar spoke. He gazed at the hilt, an heirloom treasure, on which was engraved in images and runes the origin of strife, the first view. When the sea surged in the flood, slew the race of giants, they knew suffering. Always alien to eternal God gave them deep waters reward. So Runestaves told this ancient story. On the gold hilt, once grip and guard of the greatest and sharpest steel, naming its owner with serpentine shapes, warm like runes. Courage, tempered with wisdom, the surest of shrouds. Your 
more fame spreads far. The king keeps his promise. I honor my vow. You be your people's pride and joy, comfort and keep for a long time. You're not like you're not like Harrow. King before Shul, who slew the sons of Etuela, nurturing slaughter, not justice and joy. A plague to the Danes, quick to anger, he killed his mates, his hearth companions. He turned notorious, trading Homer for murder. Though God alone gave him power to rule, sustain. Heart in his breast was bloodthirsty. He gave no rings for honor or glory to his people, the Danes, serving only himself. He lived without joy and ache and affliction to his own people. <coughs> Learn from his story. Be manly and munificent. <coughs> Shape worth from wealth. I give you this story for my treasure of yours. It is a wonder how God, in his great heart, deals out to mankind wisdom and land, nature and nobility, in his all-wielding power. <coughs> Sometimes he lets a good man's mind dwell in desire and delight, gives him heart and hope, a kingdom to rule, prosperous. Subjects a stronghold guard until lost in a wisdom, driven by folly, he cannot imagine an end to joy. The fool lives in fullness, so he believes that nothing can touch him. No twisting of fate, neither sudden illness nor old age, neither <coughs> sword strife nor ancient sorrow. Neither heart's hatred nor dark dread can twist his comfort. The world is his will. Until his pride pops up. His arrogance increases. <laughs> and the soul's guardian slumbers. The watcher wanes. His sleep is too sound, bound up by care. The soul slayer wakes in his treacherous foe. The man's heart is shot with a bitter shaft. His mind poisoned without protection. Savage suggestion. Dark demon. Insidious evil. He's without defense. He thinks he owns too little. Rules too few. His great mind is bent toward treasure. He hoards everything. Gives nothing. Forgets fate. Forgets that his glory was granted by God, who alone offers honor. And finally, he falls. His flesh house, it, <coughs> it was just the bone. Soon, another succeeds. Uh, a wealthy king <coughs> never hoards, a ring giver who rules without fear, who deals out treasure without mourning. Guard against the soul's own, beloved Beowulf, the best of men. Avoid evil, seek eternal gain. To pursue no unyielding pride, be great and forgiving. <coughs> Power is fleeting. For a time you may have might and glory, but soon illness, or the edge of a sword will sap your strength. Or the, or the fire's clutch, the floods surge, the spears fight, the swords reach, or the horror of old age. Bringing <laughs> the of eyes. I have ruled the ring Danes for fifty years. Kept them safe from swords and spears throughout Middle-earth, ruling under heaven to 
Well, I thought no enemy could touch me. Well, fate's twists and turns have found me. Sorrow turned out joy from my homeland. That old foe came to visit. The dreaded Grendel is unexpected gift of sorrow to my soul. seat of joyous feasting, war-worthy hero of the Yayats. We will share many treasures before morning. <laughs> Show you honor by 
my help of spear would aid you with the strength you need. If, on the other hand, you reference the song, the song, that he would visit, you will find home friends. Distant land, or better so, by one who is himself. Made a speech, answered. All God's Lord has sent these words into your mind. No man wiser have I ever heard speak so young in years. Great in strength, mature in thought, and wise in speech. If the son of Rethel should ever be taken in battle,
that was on Gani River rock gardens of the Hakti, that was on Kuni, I was only after, but that he knew all the benum, minus unum, sele of manium short. Minute intermission.